Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is the Foundations of Math course. This is chapter six. We're going to go over exponents and square roots. The goal of this whole course is to get you up to speed if you have any missing holes in your math education so that you can do really well on standardized math tests, whether it's the ASVAB to go into the military or whether it's the IBU uh, union, electrical workers, union math exam to get into the union. This is going to take you through all the important basic math skills so that you can move on in math as well. So in the description, there's a link to this document as well as a link to the playlist for all of the videos and a link to all of the previous videos. So let's get started with exponents. So to start with, if I have this right here, this is called my base, three squared, what that means is three times three. So what you're saying is you have three by three, all right, so you got one, two, three by one, two, three, and that gives you a total of nine, and that's why it's called a square. A square root, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. A square root looks like this, like the square root of 16 is saying what times itself will equal that number. And that's why your multiplication tables are so key. If you don't have them dialed in, go back and watch that first video. So what times itself equals 16? That's going to be equal to 4. Okay, it goes on those two ideas right there, but that's really where we're starting. Okay, here are the outcomes. Learn what an exponent square roots are. Learn the rules of exponents. Understand that, a, whoops, dropped my S there. Learn that a square root is an inverse of a square. Turn square roots into fractional exponents and then solve exponents and square root problems. So let's go over the law of exponents right now. There are five of them. The first one is called the product law or law of the product. And that is saying a to the m times a to the n. So as you notice here, the base numbers are the same. They're both a. When you multiply like this, you add the exponent. So a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. That's the first law of exponents. The second one is you divide. It's called the law of quotient. Quotient means to divide a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to the a m minus n. So you subtract exponents when you divide. Law of zero exponents, anything to the zero is equal to one. So it doesn't matter if it's 100 to the zero power is equal to one or a or variable to the power of zero is always equal to one. Proof on that's pretty long. Law of negative exponents, a to the negative m is the same thing as one over a to the m. So you can make any negative exponent positive by reciprocating it, and that means putting it in the denominator. Law of power of a power, so a to the m, the whole thing to the power of n is equal to a to the mn. All right, so let's take a look at some of these. Again, there are five laws of exponents, and an exponent is the number times itself. Again, this right here is the base. This is how many times you multiply it by itself. So five to the power of three is the same thing as five times five times five. Five times five, 25, times five, 125. So I'd be equal to 125. On these more complex problems like this, you gotta use the law of exponents to simplify them. So this one right here, I have the same bases. I'm multiplying, so I'm gonna add the exponents. So that's six to the fifth or six times six times six times six times six, big number. Um, here it's to the power, to the power of, five is my base, five squared to the power of four. In this case, I multiply them, and that gives me five to two times four, five to the eight. Here we have the quotient rule. Again, the bases are the same. So now I have seven to the 12th divided by seven to the ninth. Here I subtract my exponents. So this is equal to seven, 12 minus nine is three. The zero exponent rule right here, nine to the zero, anything to the zero power is equal to one. So six to the negative three, I can make that positive by putting it in the denominator like that. So, and the reverse of that is true as well. If I had one over five to the negative two, it's negative in the denominator. I can make it positive by reciprocating it or moving it up to the numerator or the top. All right, so those are with the numbers. Now let's take a look at variables and exponent rules. So the first thing I do on the top here, I see x to the third times x squared. That's gonna be like this one, so I add those together. 
to get x to the fifth. I still have that y to the fourth there. 4x to the third. Here I got the quotient rule, x to the fifth over x to the third. I'm going to use this quotient rule and subtract my exponents. So that's going to give me 5 minus 3, 2, x squared, y to the fourth, all over 4. Where'd that x to the third go? It went up here, right? I subtracted it and it disappeared. So that's my answer there. If there are any addition and subtraction signs in here, it's a different can of worms, so we're not doing those yet. Let me clean this board up and move these up. All right, starting to get a little more complex here. I have a 12 over a 4. That's like reducing a fraction. If you're not good on your fractions, go back and watch that fraction video because you're using those skills here. 12 divided by 4 is the same thing as 3. x to the 0, that's equal to 1 x to the negative 2, that's a negative exponent, so we're going to make it positive by putting it down below. y to the 4 and y to the 6, I'm going to subtract 6 from 4 to get y to the negative 2. y to the negative 2 in the numerator is y to the positive 2 in the denominator. That's as simplified as it can get. Down here, this is a multiplication sign, so that just means to multiply. If it was to divide, then I would reciprocate this and multiply. Again, that's a rule of the fractions. If you don't know those rules of fractions, go back and watch that fraction video, get those dialed. So now this is really all being multiplied together. Let me take a look across the top. I have x to the fourth, x to the fifth. I'm gonna add that to get x to the ninth. So I got x to the fourth, x to the ninth over x to the third. And I'm gonna subtract, so nine minus three gives me six. So in the numerator, I'm going to have x to the 6. Right here, I have my numbers, a 2 over a 4. 2 goes into there one time, into there twice. So that'll get rid of those. Only thing I have left now are my y's. I have y squared up top in the numerator, y to the ninth in the denominator. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. I don't want it up top. I want it down below to make it positive or y to the 7th. So that's how I simplify these exponent problems. Uh, hopefully that'll help, and then next we'll talk about square roots. The reverse operation of an exponent is a square root, usually noted like this, but you could also write it as a fractional exponent. So if you have the square root of 25, that is saying what times itself is equal to 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. One thing you have to note, though, is that it's actually plus or minus. 5, because negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, and 5 times 5 is 25. So there are actually two answers here, both positive and negative. The other thing as well, if there's no number written up here, it's implied it's a 1. This is a square, meaning two sides. So a square root has a 2 there. You don't have to write it there. But the other way to write this square root would be 25 to the power of 1 half. And then um, here's a general notation right here, the m root of 5 to the n. So whatever number that is, over that is a fractional exponent for that root. So that's equal to 5 to the n over m. And what this number right here does is it tells you how many times you multiply it by itself to get that number. So this right here with the 3 is called the cube root because the cube has 1, 2, three sides, so a three is a cube. The cube root of 125 is saying what times itself times itself is equal to 125. So that's equal to five, because five times five, 25 times five is 125. Okay, before you start on these problems, go ahead and pause the video. You do the problems first, and then watch how I do them. Uh, the link to this paper is in the description, so make sure you print that out, and you want to keep a notebook with all your notes in there, um, so you really could go back and reference all your foundational skills. So this is saying square root of 64, what times itself is 64? That could either be an 8 or a negative 8, either one will work. Square root of 25 plus square root of 49, you cannot add those together, that is not equal to seven, square root of 74. You got to treat those square roots like separate things inside of parentheses and do that first. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 49 is 7. 
5 plus 7 is equal to 12. When they're doing this problem, they're assuming you're going to drop the negatives, because then you'd have a few different answers there. Square root of 125. Well, I know 11 times 11 is 121. So it's going to be a little bit more than 11. The other way to do this problem is to simplify it, and those are actually the directions. So the way I simplify the square root of 125 is I look for the factors in there. I could see it's going to be a 25 and a 5. Factors of 25 are 5 and a 5. And then now that I have it into factors, I don't have to go down all the way to primes just until I have a pair. For every pair, one comes out. When there's no pair for it, it stays in. So this 25 becomes one single 5 on the outside. This one has no pair, so it stays inside. So square root of 125 can be simplified into 5 root 5. So this is 5 root 5. On number 12 here, I have this 3 out in front. I've taken that square root of 125 and I simplified it into 5 root 5 plus 2 root 5. Right, so this 125 here is this 5 root 5 here. I got that 3 out in front, so that gives me 15 root 5 plus 2 root 5. What I'm saying here is I got 15 of these root 5s, and I got two more of these things, so I got a total of 17 root 5, and that's how you simplify that. A lot of problems on exponents and square roots. Understanding the foundations first is really the key, and then we could build on that. These are now equations because they have equal signs, and now I have to isolate that variable x and get it by itself. I need to follow my order of operations, and when I'm solving, I go backwards against that order of operations. So I need to get that x squared down to something by itself, and then x by itself. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to divide both sides by 3, these will cancel. That's going to give me x squared by itself. x squared is equal to 75 divided by 3, 25. Then I still need to get this by itself. So I could take it to the 1 half power, or I could square root both sides. Square root of a square is a number by itself. Square root of 25 is either 5 or negative 5. So that's a big jump uh, on here, but every step will get us closer. Number 14 here, same thing, I got to get that square root by itself. So I divide both sides by 5. It gives me a square root of x is equal to 45 divided by 5, 9. And then the way I get this by itself, the way I get rid of a square root, is I square it. Square of a square root will give it to me by itself. 9 squared is 81. This channel is Colfax Math. Uh, math with a purpose, what I'm trying to do with this foundational math skill series is prepare you for any sort of standardized math test, whether it's a union entrance exam, the ASVAB, uh, any contractor's entrance exam. The standardized math is pretty much the same in all of them, and it's hard to move forward until you have those foundational skills. So this video is designed to be a part of a series to build those foundational skills. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. And uh, let's do these last couple problems here. It's starting to get a little hard here. So I'm going to get that x by itself. I divide both sides by 2. Half of 400 is 200. Half of 32 is 16. So I have the cube root of x is equal to 216. And then what I'm doing here, to get rid of that cube root, I actually have to take this to the 1 3rd power. Right? So this thing right here is really x to the 1 3rd, right? This is a 1, this is a 3. So I have x to the 1 3rd equals 216. So now what I have to do is I have to cube both sides. So this to the 1 3rd to the power of 3, these cancel. That gives me x by itself. And then I have 216 to the power of 3. That's going to be some gigantic number. It's probably easier just to leave it like that. But that means 216 times 216 times 216, so it's going to be a large number. OK, over here, I subtract 10 from both sides. That's going to leave me with the 2x to the third by itself is equal to 128. Still solving for x, I divide both sides by 2. x to the third is equal to 64. Then now I have to take this to the cube root. I'm going to take that to the cube root. 
cube root of that, it gives me x by itself. And I'm going to take the cube root of 64. So the cube root of 64 is saying what? Times itself, times itself is 64. Uh, you might be able to do that in your head. It's a little tricky. It's going to be 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. So x is equal to 4. The other way to have done that is 64 to the 1 3rd power. Right, that's the cube root. On your calculator, if you're doing that, you go 64 to the power of, a little carrot key on a calculator, 1 divided by 3. You've got to have parentheses there. All right, well, that's a quick overview of exponents and square roots. Keep working on it. Keep doing problems, and this stuff will start coming together. Uh, please comment below with any questions or concerns you might have, and I'll try and answer those questions in the comments. Thank you for watching.